world. I'm Phoebe Burke, and I'm here with Spencer Jones, comedian, writer, and star of The Mind of Herbert Klungadunk. Spencer Jones! Hello. Hey. Hello, hello. hello, hello. <laughs> now, if you have any questions for us, you can tweet us at Build Series LDN, or if you're watching on Facebook, you can leave a comment on the video below. Hello! How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. So tell us about your comedy short, which is airing on BBC Two. Uh, well, it's called The Mind of Herbert Klunkadunk, and uh, it's the best way to describe it is it's what I do on stage, put onto TV, and and so it's a guy who's just I've got a normalish life, but you can kind of see his imagination come to life. Come to life. Uh, and he talks to the you, the audience. He talks down the lens. The fourth wall, as they say in the business, is, is, is constantly is broken. Broken, yeah. right. We've actually got a clip of the mind of Herbert Conkadon. Let's have a look now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, it's mad, right? Say? It's mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's mad. Right. It's mad, a bit of fun. Yeah. Um, so how did you come up with the character of, of Herbert? Like, what? where did it come from? What? What is it? Um, it came from... I, I, I was always doing comedy, like a stand-up, I did a bit of stand-up and I did sketch comedy. And then I did a clown course with a guy called uh, Phil Burgers, Dr. Brown. Oh, yeah. And I was rubbish for a whole week, just a five-day course. And, but I could see that there was some fun in clowning and the way that clowns do. Not like a sort of like, um, uh, you know, big feet and sort of, you know, a squirty um, flower. <laughs> But squirty flower. Squirty flower, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the universal yeah, image of it. Um, but it was more about what the audience see, what you guys see when when someone walks on stage. So if some lady walks on stage, you might think, oh, she looks like she knows what she's doing. Or you might see a bloke who walks in and he looks like he's wearing armour or something. Whatever it is, you build like an impression up in your head of that person. And what I did was with Herbert is I worked out what people saw when I walked on. Um, and I found out that if I put tights on and gave myself a really bad haircut, then I'd start getting laughs. <laughs> and so it came, came about by going on stage and just doing something silly mm. very quickly. If they laughed at it, carry it, do it again. And that's, that was the kind of start of it. It sounds very simple, but it usually is with and me. Would you say that Herbert is like a version of you? Yeah, I kind of, sometimes I describe him as me turned up to 11. You know, <laughs> what like, are you now? Right now, no, this is Spencer. Spencer's right, sure, doing a serious sure. interview. <laughs> Uh, and he's been very normal. No, no you're being very normal. Yeah, yeah. Well <laughs> yeah I've got great. a button shirt. Um, no, like you know, like when when you when you go to a wedding and you and everyone meets for the first time. Hey, how you doing? Oh, how you doing? All right, mate. Yeah. Hey. And like the girls like ah. It's that. Yeah. It's that kind of energy of your best self. But just so, like on repeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. About, no but downtime. childlike. No, no, no downtime because you know. But obviously, very. You know, the audience is very important. You know who you're doing it to is very important. Yeah. So, so obviously, uh, Herbert started in live comedy. That yeah, character. Yeah. So you've done a lot of uh, live performance. You started in stand up. I did a double act first. We were called Marks and Spencer. Did three gigs. Two first gigs were amazing. When I was 17 years old, I was like, this is amazing. I've cracked it already. And then the third gig, I got booed off stage by 40 of my mates. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I didn't do comedy again for until I was 24. So what's that? Seven years later. Oh, lovely little break. Yeah, yeah lovely, lovely, lovely to have a little think. Um, and have you, you tried stand-up? You tried being yourself on stage and that just wasn't for you? I'm, I'm quite a private person. I know I'm sat up here talking about myself, but um, I'm quite a private person. I think stand-ups have got to be, you know, show themselves and yeah. be honest about what they think. And and I just wasn't really the man for the job. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to be able to hide behind a character in a way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You so say how you really feel, but uh, behind a... But, I'm, but yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's him. He said that. I didn't say that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and having grown the character of Herbert in the live space, did you find, hard, did you find, did you find it hard translating that like onto a screen, like how was that process? Um, well, it's always a difficult one that people, like, you know, when you see like a comedian on stage, like Morecambe and Wise, it happened to them, like when they first went from being brilliant on stage to first going on TV. It's a difficult one to get right. So with this one, Clunkadunk, the last Edinburgh show I did, I had that in my mind, what would work? What would we like to see? What is he like at home? And so I made it really about myself. So my life at the minute is kids, the house cleaning up, <laughs> And, um, and auditions, the occasional audition, which I do very badly. Yeah. And so I just did it about that, because you kind of do what you know, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's fun that you've been able to make things that are really boring, like a mop. Very entertaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's yeah, great. yeah. That's great. Um, cool. We've got a social question uh, from Bobby on Twitter, and he says, your comedy style is pretty mad. Who are your comedy inspirations? Uh, my son. 
Uh, Who is how old? He's five. Lovely. Um, <laughs> he's amazing. Like he's like totally amazing. I'm um, like the other day, like he he went he put like a plastic cup on his foot. It was empty. He went, Daddy, Daddy, look. And then he he went, What are you saying? What are you saying? And then he punched it. And went ha. Ah. And I was like, Right, okay, write that down. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm taking that. Yeah, that's the mortgage Genius. sorted for and a that's week. Free as well. That's, that's free. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, yeah. and my daughter as well. She's three. She's coming up with stuff. But then, comedy sort of heroes influences right now are the kids and the family. But then, anyone from Harry Enfield when I was twelve, hmm. Peter Cook when I was like thirteen, fourteen. Um, I will remember loads. You know, later. Yeah. Like people I love now. I love. I love Tim Key. I love John Kearns. I love Mickey Flanagan. And those are only three. <laughs> uh, Vic and Bob. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Loads yeah, of great, loads of some, great guys. Yeah. Um, so, have you always been drawn to character comedy? Was that always the thing that you? I mean, you, all the inspirations and most of those are character comedians. Is that the thing that you were like? That was where your natural space was. Um, I think I always I, I love acting, and so it me, makes sense that when you go on stage to show someone who might be able to give you a job <laughs> that you can do a voice or pretend you know be someone else. So. It, it means you've got a bit of range. So yeah, characters have always been something I, I've loved doing. And I was, I was, I, I like, I used to be a wedding singer. So I really? love, I love, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'd still, I'd still do it. Do if a I, bit. Do, no. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, no. What if I throw money? Will you <laughs> yeah, do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, it's me doing nine to five, Dolly Parton. That's amazing. Wait, did you have a band? Did you had a? Oh yeah, the the best band. I was the I was the third choice wedding singer. So. There was, uh, there was a lady called Andrea and a lady called Hazel, and if they weren't available, then the band would go, come on, let's get Spencer in. And I used to do, like, five songs, and then they used to play a lot of instrumentals to beef up the set. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, I my loved God, it. what amazing. was your fave? What was your fave song? Um, Dolly Parton, 9 to 5, or Love, Cat's the Cure. Did you only have five songs? No, by the end of it, I kind of had a few. <laughs> but it, we were scraping the bottom of the barrel by the time we were doing, like, Dean Martin songs, you know, like, those ones, you're like, are you sure, mate? You, you can get away amazing. with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, what a great place to harvest comedy than a wedding. Everyone's yeah, it's just the, a sh the maddest at a wedding. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. Um, yeah, so you you make, ama I mean, I've seen a lot of your live shows and you make these amazing songs and you like use beats and jokes and you like loop them around and yeah. do this insane stuff. It's amazing. Um, and you've, we can see that in the short as well. How did you, like, where did you find music how did that start was that a self-taught thing or yeah yeah I was a choir boy for a, <laughs> here we go yeah yeah I, was a, I, I don't know if anyone knows I was a choir boy for like a, a few years like the church choir I used to live in a village and that was a chance to sing I can see that now actually yeah. just sort of yeah. getting the hair off a bit yeah yeah yeah, yeah a little rough and stuff yeah. uh, and then the wedding stuff and then I've always played you know tried to teach myself guitar and piano and stuff I think what it is is I've got a really my my personality is I kind of flip from one thing to another so I'll be messing around with on the computer writing something, and then I go, oh yeah, that could be a song. And then I'll walk over there and get a guitar, and then I'll go somewhere else. And so I kind of, I think that might be a medical condition. <laughs> I, I'm aware of that, but I'm kind of like harvesting it, if you do not, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and so it just comes from being a scatterbrain, basically. Yeah. But I've hopefully managed to make it so that the scatterbrain is condensed and then hopefully makes people laugh for a That's bit. That's really cool. And was that one of the first things you included in your comedy performance when you started out, or did that come gradually? Uh, what was I doing? I th did I do? Yeah, there was. I think there was a song. I, I dressed up as a computer once, <laughs> and like a big, made myself a big paper mache computer, and uh, and it was a song about a computer that gets left in the loft but ends up being worth seventy five grand, <laughs> and it was a rubbish one of those previous computers. Yeah, a big sort of like you know. But then the chorus was a spectrum loading, you know, like. <laughs> and that was that. Yeah. So yeah. There was some, to answer the question, there was always, there's always some, in, basically, always if, if I get one laugh, I'll chuck it in, <laughs> you know what I mean, yeah, I mean, that's why I wear tights, because you can see the business, <laughs> and you'll get one laugh right at the start. So you're basically harvesting every part of your body to get laughs, Yeah. and like sounds, making your face look stupid, yeah. so you don't really take yourself seriously, is it like, I know a lot of comedians really want to have themselves heard, and kind of like, make a difference, whereas you're a, you're that kind of boiled down, like silly comedy, that kind of, that's sort of how I see you. I, I think there's loads of things that are good for comedians to talk mm. about, and I love it when they do. Um, but I don't think I'm the best man for the job on any of those. I, f I think the world needs those people, but I think also the world needs stupid. Yeah. The world needs idiot, and I'm there for that bit. I love idiot. Yeah. It's great. That's, that's I, my thing. Yeah. yeah, I just, I think that, um, 
if you're not clever, like me, uh, you can't enjoy a clever comedy. <laughs> So no. this guy's perfect. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For all the yeah. No. Um, so how did you find comedy? Like, was it something as a child that you were always like, oh my god, I love it. That's for me. Or so, what was your first experience of it? I reckon it was probably watching my mum laugh at Russ Abbott. Remember Russ Abbott? Some of you were too young to remember Russ Abbott. Yeah, Russ Abbott I'm, I'm 12, telly. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But watching my mum laugh at that man there. <laughs> and I used to love that. <laughs> or my nan and my granddad used to have this um, two Ronnies um, tape they used to play in the car when we used to go camping. And it had like, you know, like when they had the classical songs, but then they changed the words. Yes, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, there, um, I went to the hairdresser Saturday. There we sat like hens in the buttery. There's no use responding to flattery while the young men did our hair. You sit there in the back of the <laughs> Audi going. <laughs> <laughs> so I think those are my earliest Just memories. Out of base and yeah, fucking yeah. Out. And plus, my nan looks like Ronnie Corbett. Well, looked like Ronnie Corbett. And my granddad um, looks like Ronnie Barker. It was <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> So when you're a kid, you're like, I think this is what I want to do. Because yeah. obviously you kind of, as you sort of graduate from childhood to adulthood, have yeah. to decide that I am going to do comedy as a job. And mm. I think a lot of people are like, sorry, what? Yeah. Like, and it takes a while to actually, for people to take you seriously because that's your life choice. Yeah. And so was there any point along that way where you were like, I need to quit. <laughs> this <laughs> is not, I have to leave now. I kind of, I think this is a, you kind of go through stages, not of kind of thinking, oh, is this right for me, is it not? But I've kind of, what I've worked out now being my age now is, is I need to do stuff at home and make stuff to keep myself happy. You know, it was basically art therapy, I think. Yeah. And what I've worked out is those, all those books that I've written, as in I've not written books, as in those little black books with notes in, that make no sense now when I was trying to be a stand-up comedian. That was me just doing something because I felt like I had to. And it sounds daft, but if I don't make stuff, I get sad. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if I could not make anything on the telly and not do live, that would be fine because I'd be at home making it. But then you're not earning any money. <laughs> so it's like making a pair of shoes and then not selling them. Yeah. So I think I've worked out now in retrospect that all I was doing all the time was trying to uh, make myself happy. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you know, the, the recently, when I didn't, I didn't do Edinburgh this year and usually sort of what... February, March, April, May, you're driving to Doncaster, Exeter, trying stuff out to get mm. ready for Edinburgh Festival. Um, but this year I didn't have that sort of focus. So I found myself, I bought these amazing pens and I got some wood from a skip and I've just started drawing faces on them. And my missus kind of comes in and goes, what are you doing? I went, I'm drawing on, um, I'm drawing on wood <laughs> with pens. She was 42. Yeah, yeah, I'm 42. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's whatever gets you through, you know? Absolutely. Um, so you mentioned Edinburgh. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival is the biggest arts festival in the world? I think so, yeah. yeah. In the world, right? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Um, and your show got nominated for the main award. It is, The yeah. Oscars of comedy, you could yeah, say. Is what they say, yeah. Um, and so how, for, so how do you, so Edinburgh, you perform every day for a month. Yeah, it's like 25, 26 shows, yeah. Yeah, sort of lose your mind. How do you cope with, with Edinburgh? It's, it's such a marathon. I've got it, I've worked it out now. So oh, yeah. the first year, I didn't take the family up with me and I went off the rails and just sat there eating cheese sandwiches, doing a rubbish show. <laughs> Second year, they came up for the whole month. We drove up in a car with the budgie in the car and everything. The, that, you've got a budgie? I've got a budgie, yeah. yeah. What's, this, what's it called? Dirk. Dirk. Yeah, yeah Dirk. Yeah, yeah. Very one. confident. <laughs> um, and so we went up in the car. We did the whole month, and that was nightmare journey, 11-hour journey, and back. But it was a good year. The following year, they came up a week in. So I got a chance to kind of walk around in my pants, working out what the show was and which bit went where, you know, eating hobnobs, got, went a bit mad, but it was quite good and useful. And then when they turn up, you're an airport cliche. Oh, my God, my family. Uh, <laughs> and and that, felt like good, that felt good. Also, the good thing to do is be as close to your venue as you can. When you're a props guy like me yes. and you forget something, you can always phone up the missus and go, bring me the honey, bring me the honey now. <laughs> and she's like, but it's the manuka expensive. <laughs> but just bring it, I need to smear it on my face. Yeah, so, yeah, so I think going mad is don't worry about just make sure the audience have a nice time. Yeah. That's it. That is all you've got to do is that's your main focus. Because they're the ones who've gone, let's watch this person. And they've paid their money. And, you're, you, and I know it's a cliche because you're sat here now, the audience. But they're always the most important thing. And they always, yeah. they always should be, you know. And you know when they're not having a good time because they don't laugh. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great. Um, so final question. Okay. Uh, 
Now this is kind of a what would you do, okay? Yeah. So if someone said to you, yeah. you can have ten million pounds, yeah, but you can't ever make any jokes ever again, yeah, or you can carry on making jokes, no ten million pounds. What are you going for? So basically, by making jokes, I won't ever. I'm guaranteed never to earn ten million yeah. pounds. <laughs> That's why it's a tough. Oh, question. hang on! But I'm never. Gar I'm guaranteed to never earn ten million pounds from making jokes. Yes. Can I make jokes in my private life? No. <laughs> it's not going to happen. You go for the jokes. I have to because it, I'd, I'd literally. I yeah. I wouldn't be a dad for very Yay, much longer. Yay! That's great, guys. <laughs> Round of applause. <laughs> jokes over ten million pounds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would uh, not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, that's sadly all we've got time for with Spencer. Thank you. Um, so you can catch The Mind of Herbert Clunkadunk tonight at 9.45 on BBC Two. Mm. Um, let's give a round of applause to Spencer. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for coming on, Bill. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Happy Bye. Bye.